If I take a round profile and wrap my rope around it, I can pull my rope so it falls on top of itself, but it's not gonna hold because there's no opposing surface. If I do the same thing with the square profile, watch what happens. I'll pull the rope on top of itself, but this time it holds and I can continue to pull in tension and the rope will continue to hold. Let me show you what's going on here. As I pull on the rope, it slips underneath. And when I pull it back the other way, it clamps down on itself. This allows us to pull in as much tension as we want without losing anything. It's similar to how a wrench works. If you have no opposing surfaces, you're gonna slip right off. But when you have an opposing surface, you can take hold. So let's try this with one and see how we do. We'll poke it through, go all the way around, cinch it tight. Go through the gate once, go through twice, and we'll pull. We see that when the rope slides on top of itself, it just slips right back, just like the rounded profile. When we stack two together, what we're essentially doing is elongating a rounded surface. So now we can take this, poke it through, we'll wrap it all the way around. Let's get our other end, go through the gate once, go through twice. Now when we pull, you see we get to keep everything. And that's because we've created an opposing surface that a rope can clamp down on. Take it out by pulling it back through the gate. This is a climbing carabiner. I got it at REI. You can see it has a specific profile. I imagine it helps the strength. But you can still use any cheap carabiners that you could buy. These I got at Lowe's. I think they were a dollar or two each. All right, let's get these a try. Lincoln once. We can twice, pull, pull, pull. It's holding just fine. We'll go back through the gates and pop it free. You could even use different sizes and it'll work the same. All right, we're all clipped in. Now we'll start running our rope through the gates. It might be a little awkward since we're dealing with different sizes, but this is gonna be a good indication as far as rope placement and why that's important. You can see we get to keep everything we pull in but if I were to force these together, there we go, we run the risk of this portion here slipping forward and then we'll lose our black wall hitch. As long as our back turn is supported, then we'll be just fine. If you wanted to, you could modify a couple chain links to do the same thing. You would just have to pull in an extra turn to keep it secure. So here are those modified chain links. Let me demonstrate that extra turn I was talking about. But first let me show you what it looks like when you put in a single turn. Watch what happens back here. As I pull in my tension, it starts to slip lower and lower. And as we learned earlier, the closer we are to the opposite side, the more likely it is to slip. And so here's how we fix that. I'll hook in once, and then I'll hook in twice, okay? Now as we pull in tension, the rope will start to roll on itself until it ends up supporting on the backhand side. Now we can pull in as much tension as we want and we're not going to lose it. Here's that tensioning action one more time. You see it's slipping on itself, rolling around. There we go. Now we're in place and we can put all the tension we want. To pull it free, we'll just go back the opposite way. It's all based on the black wall hitch, which was used a long time ago to haul cargo. Here's some more information about it from the Ashley Book of Knots. Now there's all kinds of places you can tie this off. You just need to know how to set it up. Here it is on a wrench. Here's a claw hammer. C-clamp. Here's a reverse setup on a pair of needleless pliers. A quick note on the large head we use to tie everything in. It doesn't matter which way it lands because it'll hold any way it falls. All right, folks, that's it for now. If you liked what you saw, please like and subscribe.